IELTS Face Off Season 2 had been a fantastic journey. We talked, discussed, debated, sang, did magic tricks. I met an incredible group of people from all walks of life, and their inspiration is contagious. I'm so eager to hit the new season of the show, but in this season, my job will be tougher. The producers have not told me the topic, or have they told me who the guest will be. Am I nervous? Hey, face-off producers, challenge accepted. My blood's pumping and my adrenaline's rising. IELTS Face Off Season 3 starts now. I am so pumped because this season, Season 3 of IELTS Face Off, has so many surprises for me. I don't know the guest. I also don't know the topic. What am I going to do? Well, I have some hints. Oh my goodness, it's a riddle, it's a puzzle. Give me 10 seconds, guys, for me to solve this. Okay, it's cover. What is this? All of the words are jumbled up. Uh, judging, 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 judging. Okay, a book, a book judging its cover? <gasps> judging a book by its cover. That's the topic today. I think it's something about not being judgmental. It's something about somebody who's very sincere, very true to his color, I think. People are also going to give me another clue with this video. Hi, I am Tao Wuki Nam and I'm a book cover designer. I never thought it would become such a big part of my life. I knew I loved books and pretty things. Until one day, I got to design my very first book and it led me to a nine years career doing just that. <gasps> oh, I know this guy. And I think he has sung, he has done a lot of amazing art things and he also is an illustrator. I'm so excited to meet him. So let's go meet him now. Oh, guys, this is the IELTS Face Off Studio for season three, and our guest is right there. Let's go. Hi, Tumi. How are you? Oh, I'm great. That's such a good hug. Let's do that one more time. I'm not really enjoying it, but okay. Okay, well, okay, that's enough, that's enough. That's All right. enough. You look awesome. I think I we know. should really commemorate this by um, by taking a selfie together. Okay, can you do that? Sure. Well, I don't know how to take a selfie. Really? Are you even millennial? Uh, not really. Okay, let me show you. All right. Fantastic. So now you're officially a millennial. Thanks a lot for bringing me into the millennial world. Okay. But, so fellow millennial, are you ready to face off? Oh, been ready my whole life for this. All right, so face off, y'all. Face off, y'all. Okay, Kinam, oh, I've always been wanting to talk to you because I, I love your drawings and I love your illustrations, but do you really identify yourself as an illustrator? No, I am not an illustrator. I more identify myself as a graphic designer. <laughs> so your face, right? People are saying like you have a resting bitch face, an RBF. Yes, I Why? have that. Why do people say so? I don't know, people just look at me and ask if anything wrong, no, I said, no, it's just my face. <laughs> I look like that all the time. So. In terms of creativity, you know, um, I w what is going to be your defining creativity definition? Like, what kind of creative person are you? Now you're asking me a very different question. Like, you're asking me how I am become me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you, you remember the time of uh, Yahoo 360 blog? Yes. Yes. Where you can write something and the whole world can read it. For the first time, something what? magically appears yeah. in somebody's desktop, yeah. half the world away. Uh -huh. yeah. Then I realized that I really, really enjoy up putting my idea out there. Every crazy, even the smallest part, that can be put out there. And then I realized that I would love to, I would love to keep creating things. It's like a drug. I think creativity is a drug. You have one taste of it, and you're gonna, you're gonna come back for more. Mm -hmm. You create one thing, you have to create another thing, or else you will feel really bored. Mm. When I realized that I just can't stop creating things, that is when I realized that this is my life now. Mm -hmm. Creator with a crazy time machine. Keep on going and going, going, going back and forth, and back and forth, and mm. then forward mm. with just that creativity. How do you maintain your creativity, given the fact that, you know, sometimes everything is kind of like repeated nowadays? Mm. I've been asking that question a lot, and to tell the truth that I didn't come up with any kind of method. I think it's mostly because I'm a genius, you know? Yes. 
I think that I am a very, very detailed person. Every time I read a book or watch a movie, try to go to the very root of it because at the root of every problem, there is an idea there. That is my way of uh, keep myself creative all the time and I have to create things, you know. The more you create, the more creativity will come to you. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, every person who works in the creative industry or uh, uh, graphic design, they have this like a, a mental story that stores all kind of ideas, inspirations, and even stupid jokes, you know. The, my job is to pick one book and marry it with an idea to see if it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the, more, the more life experiences you have, the better. You always want to see the, the little things that people don't see, but walk, me, walk us through that thought process. Sometimes um, I'm procrastinating. For example, there, there's this book I spent like a one, one, one whole month, and I couldn't find any like, idea good enough for that. But then when an idea hits, and it's motivating me enough to actually start doing it, it took me like half an hour or even an, or just an hour to finish the book cover. So I think that why I am procrastinating, my brain is actually working. I think creativity is a muscle in your brain that the more you work, the stronger it becomes. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. I do think that, you know, with regards to us and our, our own development, we have to train this muscle, we also have to train the mental muscle, yes. and we also have to train the creativity muscle. And I think that's a great way to put yes. uh, into picture mm. the creativity muscle. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that you have like this leaky faucet behind your brain that it keep like, you know, dropping little, 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 little drops of water. And it just keep like dropping. Is book illustration a necessary part of your creativity. Let's say if now you don't do book illustrations. Now let's say you were to do graphic design or you were to sh just draw portraits. Would you still be as creative and as passionate as you are when you're designing books? It's hard to tell because I, I haven't think about anything else beside uh, this area. I tried some other things, they're interesting, but the one thing that I can be so sure that I can do book covers, well, all of my life. Let me tell you a story. Like the very first time I am assigned uh, a book to design, like nine years ago, I couldn't sleep that night. I just I lie awake, and all the all those ideas keep popping in my head, keep popping in my head, and I just can't wait for the morning to come so I can actually do it. Mm. And at that time, I know nothing about Photoshop, mm. absolutely nothing. So the, the very first book cover is actually my very first work from Photoshop. So yeah, I was very lucky. I found true love that night. So if you're asking me something like if I, I don't want to do book covers anymore, what should I do? Yes, actually, I currently I'm doing a lot of things. I'm, I'm doing a lot of things. But like designing books, or work at least on publishing, is something that keeps me going. A place I call home. I feel comfortable there. For nine years, I am always working on a book cover. Even I'm not thinking about it, my brand keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's, a, it's very lucky to find true love. It's a very meaningful experience, but people mm. can really make a lot of jokes out of that night where you found your true love and you cannot sleep. <laughs> and it's a completely different feeling. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. What, a, what kind of advice do you have for, for people that are younger and that want to do something that's supposedly not very clear in the career path? A lot of people keep asking me that they want to be a creative person. What can they do? What should, what should they do? What should they learn? I know what you're going to say. Just do it. Don't ask. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Stop asking and start doing something about it. Creative. Create. Create something. Doing it. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Because ideas don't just magically come. You have to like really look for it. Working hard to find it. Look at the person you want to become. Find what makes he or she different from other people. Just by paying attention and just by creating things, instead of like talking too much about it or planning it, actually doing it. So you on social media is very interesting because you're also a creator on social media and you create all of these memes and you also always share with people how you always break things. Mm. Do you actually break things? I am really clumsy. Okay. If I want attention, I would create things, not breaking things. <laughs> And li like I tell you, when I have an idea in my head, I will follow it. And I just abandon everything happens around me. Okay. So maybe that is part of the reason why I keep breaking things. 
I break things a lot that my parents, like, they get used to it. Like, I break things and they, they don't even bat an eye. Okay. You know, in order for you to actually get to a lot of where you are right now, right? I'm sure you have read a lot, you've learned a lot from people. So what's your, what's your favorite book up until this point? So, I would say that Life of Pi. Oh, Life of Pi. I love Life of Pi. Yeah, I love the book. I love the movie. I don't know why. But there's something very tantalizing about that story. Even until today, I couldn't really decode it. Hmm. And the author, he, he is a very, you know, good storyteller. Well, guys, if you ever are interested in basically reading Life of Pi, we actually have a couple of resources for you so that you can actually find Life of Pi. So keep that in mind and make sure you check out what we have to tell you, okay? So now, before we go into the next section, I really want to actually ask you, what are some of your favorite idioms in English? Because you learn everything on your own. You learn how to draw on your own. You learn how to graphic design on your own. You also learn English on your own. So what are some of your, of your favorite phrases or idioms? You know what? I don't have one. You don't have one. Okay. I don't. Then what about your favorite vocabulary? Favorite vocabulary? Uh -huh. Book. Book? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think book is a good answer. What else? Book cover. And book cover. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Every time I, I say that out loud, there's this very, you know, comfortable feeling inside mm. me. So glad that you've been able to share with us all of those vocabulary that you're so passionate about. Now, because you're so comfortable, Really? We're going to put you to the, to the challenge. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sweating and I'm nervous as hell. You don't look nervous at all. Because you know? I'm a good actor, you know. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for the next challenge at the table where you might not be so comfortable? Yes, I'm ready. But you might enjoy it a lot. Yes, cool. All right. I'd love to try okay. new things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So guys, IELTS challenge is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome to IELTS Challenge. And the n challenge for Kinam is going to be uh, an expression challenge. Because cool. I'm going to hold up a couple of figures and you're going to actually allow me to guess it by acting out that person. Cool. Let's do it. Oh, sorry, người hãy quay về, quay về đây. Xin hãy quên bao cây đắng. You are my destiny, destiny. Hạnh phúc xưa đâu rồi? Okay, she is a very famous celebrity in Vietnam. Oh, cool. Yes, correct. Yêu hay không yêu, không yêu hay yêu nói một câu. Sơn Tùng. Good. She's um. Uh, Bích Phương. Oh yes, correct. He's green, huge. The Hulk. Yeah. Nàng ngắm xa dần. Sơn Tùng. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, it's a very famous cartoon in Vietnam with the cat. Uh, Tom and Jerry. Yes, just uh the cat. Uh, Jerry. Just a cat. Tom. Okay. Đóa hoa hồng xinh tươi biết hát. Hồng Ngọc. Oh my God. Where are you living all the time? Phương Anh. No, uh, very young. Mỹ Linh. Right now, very young and hot right now. Hoàng Mỹ Dinh. Hoa Hồng. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm, she used to be a hot girl, but now she's singing. Oh, 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 Chipu. Yes. Oh, uh, a superhero. He's funny. He's a... Uh, Ninja Turtle. No. Uh, Spider-Man. Oh, the movie just came out. This is the second. Deadpool? Yeah, cool. That guy. I got all correct. Yay, we made a great team. All right, we made a great team. I think the moral of the story is... You have to be very updated with the pop culture, girl. Yes, to be updated with the pop culture and mm -hmm. also to be able to express whoever we're talking about in multiple ways. Yes, cool. All right. So much fun today. I hope to see you at future dance booth. And already, I enjoyed my time here. Oh, you're my new favorite person. You're my new favorite Okay. Next, will be a brief fresh to Duck and his journey on the go. Set the first start in Hanoi at the Book Street here, we will meet two young girls, listen to their story, and of course, be excited for the very first voice of the week of this season. Who will get to the simulator speaking test room? And will the expert be gentle with her? But wait, who will be the first IELTS expert to join the studio? We are going to have the answer right now.
Hey, we're back on Niall's Face Off, and in this first episode, you'll get to see a Niall expert that you've been very familiar with in all the other seasons. I wonder who she is. And if you're wondering who she is, we're gonna get our IELTS expert to reveal herself. Hi everybody, it's great to be back. <laughs> so great to have you back. <laughs> and lovely shirt you have today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're looking gorgeous too. Thank it's you. a beautiful lip color you've got on. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, red matches green. Yes, there we go, all in harmony. <laughs> yeah, we're in a tropical paradise. <laughs> that is this bathtub. <laughs> exactly, well, I actually picked this up in a trip to Thailand because it's got gum leaves on it. That's archetypally Australian. Mm -hmm. so. so speaking about going on trips, we are actually following our friend Dang Chen Dung to IELTS on the go. So Dang Chen Dung, take it away. Hello guys, my name is Tung Dang, this is Isles on the Go, and here I am at this very beautiful book street in uh, Hanoi, Vietnam, and if you don't know about this street already, you're missing out. It's like full of books. It's the book nerd's paradise. But uh, today I have with me very two special guests, so let's get to know them a little bit. Uh, let's start with you. Uh, my name is Zha Khang, I am grade uh, 5, uh, and I study in uh, a Hanoi Star School. Okay, what about you? Yeah, my name, my name is Tu and I am uh, a student in grade 7 of Dan Hedium Secondary School. You guys' English is really, really good. How did you learn it? Um, I kind of like learned it when I was a child of three and my teachers like taught me everything. And my friends, they are like pretty good at English. So I like learn from my teachers and my friends. What about you? I study in international kindergarten. So I have a Canadian teacher. She is very take care of two students. Uh, so I learned from her and my mother too. She is very good at English. Uh, how did your mother help you to learn English? Uh, firstly, she bought many uh, kinds of books that books. Uh, yeah suitable for me, and uh, uh, I can relax and enjoy uh, with the book. And sometimes I uh, I look up the dictionary uh, because uh, the story is very short. Okay. Everyone kind of has their own way, uh, their own medium, so to speak, to uh, kind of learn English and approach the language. For you, is reading, is it the same for you as well? I think it's kind of like the same, you know, like I, I read a lot of like English books for kids about animals and like planets and like kind of like my mom brought, bought it for me and I just like love it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, oh my God, I, ne I need to learn this language to like mm -hmm. read more English books. And this kind of like, inspired me. Yep, it's the same for me as well. And I think uh, reading is a very accessible skill. I mean, you don't need a whole lot of things to get started. I mean, just pick up a book and read and uh, reading materials are abundant on the internet as well, yeah. right? So reading is also a big part of the IELTS test. I know this sounds kind of intuitive, but most people, uh, when they do the reading test, they kind of turn it into a game of scanning. Like they're just trying to look for the right information. They're not really interested in the actual content of the reading passages. Most people would think that like the IELTS reading passages are very dry, yeah. but they actually are pretty informative. Uh, they talk about uh, a broad spectrum of topics. That is wonderful for the writing test because in the writing test you need a lot of ideas, yeah. right? So do you have any problems like with the uh, writing test? Well, I think the writing test is like not too hard for me because like I've, I've read a lot of books, read a there lot of news, and it's just kind of like a really good things when you do the writing test. And I mean like if you have troubles with the writing, just like write more and write more, just practice it. And then mm -hmm. one day like you will nail it. It will be like, okay. There we go. So you have a really good starting point. Like you've already covered, I think, a lot of topics in life yeah. from the reading that you yeah. did. Uh, in the writing test, you, you kind of have your own opinion of the world, yeah. right, which is important to really? developing an essay because an essay mm -hmm. is built on your personal viewpoint, yeah. right? So uh, for because your guests on the show and because I'm a nice, uh, I'm going to give you a very special gift and that is an opportunity to do a simulation test with an IELTS expert. But I can only let one of you into the test room, okay? So we're going to have to decide among yourselves which one is the one that will win this opportunity. Who is going to win the privilege? Okay, I will let her to do first because uh, she is in secondary school. Okay, and you, you still have a long way uh, away from the test, right? Oh, yeah. really? I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, very nice. So now I'm going to take Tu uh, to the test room. Okay, so let's wish her luck. Yeah. Break a leg. Let's go. Well, our friend Dang Chen has found us somebody who can actually speak. So he's up for the IELTS face-off. Are you up? 
to the challenge. Yes, I'm up for it. We have chosen this cutie to be voice of this week in the very first episode. Let's wait and see how Bao Tu will deal with the IELTS expert and the real-time simulator speaking test. And next, you can't miss the writing tips with the useful advice for you and to understand how important is the grammar to your writing. And for the very first time in this season, we'll bring you the new segment Book of the Week with suggestions for the material you need to study for IELTS. Sounds cool, right? All the excitement will be brought to you right now. Hello, my name is Lily. Welcome to the IELTS Face Off Speaking Test. What's your name, please? Um, hi. Um, my name is Phan Ba Thu. Let's move to part one, where we'll be talking about food. What is a common meal in your country? Um, a common meal in my country, whether it is lunch or dinner, must always include, first of all, is rice, and then some kind of protein. It is usually pork, but it could also be fish or steak, um, ve vegetables, and a bowl of clear broth cooked with vegetables or meat. It is almost like soup in foreign country, but we eat it with rice. And people in my country, they do believe that a meal like this will bring us the perfect balance between necessary nutrition and provide enough energy for a person to work and study every day. Let's move on now to part two. Describe a time you were shopping in a street market. You have one minute to prepare for what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Okay, time's up. A uh, street market has always been an important culture in Vietnamese, uh, with the from the Vietnamese people. And as a citizen of Hanoi, of course, I've had many chances to visit one. But there was one very special time when my mom brought me to a little bit more special place, which is the Spring Flower Market. Using flower as decoration during the new year has long been an important culture to Vietnamese people. So at this point of the year, every local will be eager to find themselves the freshest as well as the most beautiful flower among thousands. That's why on that special day, my mom woke me up very early. At 4 a.m. in the morning, we arrived at one of Hanoi's most popular flower market. And Never in my life had I seen Hanoi's market as busy as that day. Even though it was only at the crack of dawn, the market has been packed with, buy, with buying and selling things. And the streets were full with parents and children, fans and couples. They all go hand in hand around the markets to find the favorite flowers. And uh, like the atmosphere, the atmosphere over there was so warm, so welcoming. Everything was just so amazing. But what really impressed me was the flowers there. There were like peach blooms and kumquat trees and apricots, yellow daisy, lily and orchids. Every flower had its own kind of beauty and they all seemed to be blooming right at that moment. And I just wanted to buy everything. But my mom decided that we should just buy a little bit of everything. As I was a, only a really young and curious child, I was overwhelmed by everything. The people, the atmosphere, the flower. I could still remember the cold wind of the early morning, the wonderful, the wonderful color of the flower, as well as the warmth and happiness of the people there. And I truly believe that spring flower market, it's not only a traditional culture, but it is also a really unique way to mark the beginning of a new year. People from all over my country come here, not only because of the flower, they visit the market in order to meet new people. They want to join in the impressive atmosphere. And the most important things of all is to, is to find some peace before a new busy year start. That's why this is one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had. All right, let's move to part three. What do you think are the advantages of buying things on the internet? Mm, just see the way people love shopping online. It is pretty clear that shopping things on the internet has lots of advantages. The first one is its convenience. Convenience has always been the biggest reason. You can shop like anywhere, anytime, even if it's during the middle of the night and there's no lines to wait in, no crowds to fight with. Just imagine having to buy things during the festive seasons or special occasions. It must take forever to take what you need. So online shopping is definitely the solution. Less time and less effort. The second thing is that if you shop online, the price will be more like the price will be better because products will come to you directly from the manufacturers or sellers. So there will be no middlemen being involved. So therefore, the price will be more reasonable. Thank you. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. I'm reading uh, a book about the founder of. Hi. What's up? How was the speaking test? I think I could do it that good. 
You, you seemed very confident. Like, were the questions easy or were... Well, was it because, you know, they were familiar topics? The topic is kind of like strange, but I find it's pretty like interesting because I've thought of it before. Mm -hmm. So I just got like some ideas and I just kind of like try to develop it. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah. uh, we're going to see what the IELTS expert has to say about your performance. Nice job. So Lily, what did you think of our lovely two's performance? Um, to your performance was fantastic. You've got so much energy and you just so clearly wanted to communicate. Um, a lot of great content to us um, and that was a real positive of your delivery but also maybe held you back slightly this time as well. So my key piece of advice for you would be watch your speed of delivery. You need to slow it down a little bit um, and make sure you're getting those breaths in in between sentences but also that you're finding a natural sort of rhythm um, through pausing and chunking within sentences too. Uh, it's totally human nature when we're under pressure for the adrenaline to pump and for people like me, and it sounds like you too, for the speech to get quicker and quicker, but just slow it down a little bit, breathe through it in your IELTS delivery, because uh, you've got a lot to say and a lot of fantastic vocabulary uh, to say it with as well. Well, that's like really impressive feedback. I was in the exam room with you, but that's like a testament to your wonderful performance. So how do you feel about taking the actual test now? Well, I think, I think I will be ready. I hope I will be ready. Like, through this experience, like, feel kind of, like, excited for the real test. Okay. So, I, I think that like, you guys are on a pretty similar level. So, you seeing her getting good feedback, you feeling good about yourself? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much for watching this IELTS On The Go. My name is Tung Dang, and we'll be back with some more tips, 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 and tips. So Lily, what do you think of the writing tips for this time? Okay, so I think the tip um, that we have here is to focus on grammar, and it's a really good tip. Uh, we need to look at both the accuracy of our grammar, but also what we call the range. If you've got a bunch of simple sentences and they're accurate, it's not gonna get you where you wanna go. So you need to work on having a range of complex structures, i.e. Uh, double or multiple clause structures that you're comfortable using. Also, don't forget that when we talk about grammar, it's usually around the sentence level. We've also got, got to go a bit more macro and look at what we call discourse. That means you've got to hang all your ideas together beautifully using those topic sentences in your paragraphs and beautiful transitions um, between ideas, between paragraphs and so on. So you can really smash it on the cohesion and coherence front. <laughs> Love that you said to smash it on the cohesion and coherence. Go for it, smash those goals. Yeah, yes. I'm trying to be in energizing and empowering. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about smashing things. Yes. <laughs> Today's topic is on judging, not judging a book by its mm. cover. Do you have any idioms to share with our audience? There is one, and I feel like a little bit um, that maybe I shouldn't be sharing this. I'm pretty sure it's an American one, uh, but I love <laughs> the expression "all hat and no cowboy." That's when someone really talks a talk, but there's not a lot of substance there. So if you're all hat and no cowboy, please don't waste my time. Love it, yeah. love it. Hey Lily, did you know that a lot of people ask us what books to use when they want to study the IELTS? Well guys, don't wait any longer because we are here to give you a new section in this season of IELTS Face Off. It is the books review section. So let's see which IELTS books you can use. The IELTS Book of this week is the official Cambridge Guide to IELTS. Very thorough and comprehensive guide to strategies in each skill. This book is written by the creator of the IELTS test themselves and is very authentic. There are also 8 full practice tests and a DVD app with speaking test videos. Well, this is the end of the first episode of season three of IELTS Face Off, but it is not the end. I had so much fun talking to Dakwoki Nam and he was so funny. 
But this is not the only fun and entertaining guest. We're going to have a lot more. And to, while today's topic is to not judge a book by its cover, I also think that you should not judge the show by its cover. This is the cover. It's going to get better in time. So we'll see you next time. Take care. Ciao, ciao.